In this video, we're going to be working with and simplifying imaginary numbers. So we're going to be simplifying problems that are having involving adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, just simplifying in general um, with imaginary numbers. So, uh, quick review. The whole idea of an imaginary number is the square root of a negative. We symbolize that with an i. So, let's simplify a couple and see where this goes. So first one, let's say we are working with the square root of negative 72. And the idea is, is that when negatives come in, we really can't square root a negative. So we're going to symbolize it with a, a symbol, basically. We're going to represent the square root of a negative with a symbol, and then that allows us to do some things. So we're going to break this up a little bit. So we're going to take the square root of 70, negative 72, See if we can break off a perfect square, which is 36, is the biggest perfect square that we could break off of the 72, and two is gonna be the other value. And I'm gonna keep the negative on this, because then that's gonna allow me to do a little bit of work with it. So, square root of 36 is six, but we're square rooting a negative, so we'll symbolize that with a six i. So that i just meant we square rooted a negative to get there. And then we have a two left over square root of 2. All right, so another one. Um, let's say we try and simplify 4 plus the square root of negative 5. Sometimes there's a bunch that we can do, sometimes there's not a lot that we can do. That square root of a negative 5, we're going to try and do the same thing and see if we have a perfect square mixed in. We don't. So really the only thing that we can do with this is just take out the negative from the square root and symbolize it with an i. That's it. So another one. If you have the square root of negative 25 times the square root of negative 16, multiplying those two pieces together, um, this one's a little bit different than what you've seen in the past. Is in the past, it's you have square roots. You should be able to put these values together. But actually, because of having these negatives inside, there's something else we have to do first. We're going to have to simplify these pieces like we did with number one, and then we'll multiply. All right, so we'll start with the square root of a negative 25, which is just 5i, and then square root of negative 16 is 4i. Combine these two together, we're going to get a 20 i squared. So going back up here, the square root of negative 1 symbolizes an i, but an i squared is a negative 1 squared, because an i in general is a square root of a negative 1, and then having an exponent on that turns i squared into negative 1 every single time. So we can simplify it. So this value, this i squared, is really the same idea as a negative 1. So instead of it being 20 times i squared, it can be 20 times negative 1, which will give us a negative 20. All right, so let's do another one. So let's say we have what is known as a complex number. We have a negative 10 minus 4i plus 6 minus 5i. And this is known as a complex number. Complex number has this look to it, where this is our real value, so positives, negatives, fractions, decimals, square roots, and this is our imaginary. This is our piece that had a square root of a negative attached to it. So this is a complex number, and really we're just gonna combine our like terms. Reals go with reals, imaginaries go with imaginaries, and we're adding them. So negative 10 and 6 makes negative 4. Negative 4i and negative 5i makes negative 9i. And the i doesn't change exponent-wise because we're not multiplying them together. All right, let's do another. So a similar look is we're going to have a 2 minus 3i minus 2 minus i. 
So another complex number. So reals and imaginaries mixed together. We're going to take this one and subtract this one away from it. And personally, I always make this a lot easier. I would rather add things than subtract things. So I take that negative and I distribute it to the piece, those two pieces afterwards. So if I'm going to distribute the negative in, that's going to become a positive. And all it's going to do is just change their signs. So it works out a little bit more straightforward for me. Don't have to if you're comfortable doing it. Just remember that you're subtracting that piece and you're subtracting the imaginaries. But I like to not have to worry about it. So I distribute my negatives and I have a 2 plus a negative 2. They cancel each other away. Then I have a negative 3i plus a positive i, which is negative 2i. So we lost our real value and it's just left as an imaginary. All right. So if we have this complex number, instead of them being added or subtracted, complex number is going to be multiplied. All right. So we have 2 plus the square root of negative 8 times 6 plus the square root of negative 3. So very similar to the third one we did. Before we want to multiply this stuff together, because that's what we're going to have to do, distribution here, we're going to want to simplify this together, uh, simplify it out first, and then we'll deal with the distribution. So we're going to rewrite, and this is going to be 2 plus. Now the square root of negative 8, I can simplify and take a negative 4 out, being my perfect square. So trying to find the biggest perfect square I can, negative 4 is the biggest one I can take out of a negative 8. So that will square root to 2i, and then times the square root of 2, and then 6 plus. I can't take a perfect square out, so all I can do is rewrite that as i times the square root of 3. Now we're going to do our distribution. So 2 is going to be distributed into both of those two, so that's going to get us a 12 um, plus 2i square root 3. And then we'll do our second distribution, which is going to be this piece distributed into both. So 2i square root 2 times 6 is going to be 12i square root 2. And then 2i square root 2 times i square root 3. So 2i times i is going to be 2i squared. Square root of 2 times the square root of 3 makes the square root of 6. So we got a little bit of cleaning up to do here. i squared, again, is a negative 1. So that's going to make this a negative 2. So we'll have a 12 plus 2i root 3 plus 12i root 2 minus 2 square root 6. So the i squared is a negative 1, which just makes this whole term a negative. And then we're going to try to combine our like terms, if we have any. So imaginaries are going to look to go together, um, but square root of 2 and the square root of 3 are not the same, so those are not like terms. Um, and this has a square root of 6 on it, this does not as far as the reals go. So I just want to try and keep it in this kind of an order where we put all of our reals in the front and our imaginaries in the back. So these are our two reals, so I'm going to put those two first. And then I'm going to take the imaginaries and put them second. It's just a little bit of cleanup. And that's as far as I can go with it. All right, so the last thing we have to do is division. So how do we deal with dividing with i's? So if we have 5 divided by i, it's very similar to dividing by square roots, where you're rationalizing the denominator. And it's essentially the same idea because i is a square root. It's a square root of a negative. So if you want to clear out, we want to get rid of that idea of a square root in the denominator, we are going to multiply by another i. We're going to multiply by another square root. So what works out very nicely on this is, and if you notice, we're going to multiply top and bottom of that fraction by an i over an i. That's really just a 1. So you're multiplying the fraction by 1. 
So it's going to change the look, but it's not going to change the value. So 5 times i is 5i, and then i times i is going to be i squared, which is 5i over negative 1, because that's what an i squared is. And we don't need to write it this complicated. We can just apply the negative to the top, and we don't need to write a fraction at all anymore. All right, last one. So here's how complicated they can get. You can have a 3 plus a 2i on top and a 2 minus i on the bottom. So on this one, it's like having a 2 minus the square root of a negative 1 on the bottom. So again, we're still going to try to rationalize this. And we're going to multiply by the conjugate. Multiplying by the conjugate has a wonderful effect any time that we're trying to do this. So our conjugate is the exact same piece except it's going to be a 2 plus i rather than a 2 minus i. And we distribute and see what we can get out of this. So same thing, we're multiplying by 1. So we're not changing the value, we're just changing the look. So we got some distribution we're going to do. So 3 times 2 is going to get us a 6. 3 times i is plus 3i. 2i times 2 is plus 4i. 2i times i is plus 2i squared. Okay, so that's what the top becomes. The bottom is really what we're focused on. Whatever happens to the top happens to the top. But the bottom, the whole goal is to try to not have an i on the bottom, just like we did over here on number 7. So we'll distribute again. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is plus 2i. Negative i times 2 is minus 2i, and negative i times i is negative i squared. So, 100% of the time, when you multiply something by its conjugate, your middle pieces are going to cancel each other. So that took care of that set of i's, and this i squared is essentially a negative 1. So, you're about to lose your denominator. So the i squared on top is also a negative 1. So let's see what that does for us. So we're going to have a 6 plus 3i plus 4i. And this is going to be a 2 times negative 1, which is a negative 2 on top. We're going to have some like terms that we can put together. And even better on the bottom is that i squared is negative 1, so we have a negative negative 1. So that becomes 4 plus 1. We no longer have an i in the denominator. That's exactly what we are shooting for. So 6 minus 2 is 4. 3i plus 4i is 7i divided by 5. And we can write it like this, or we can break it up as to having more of a complex number look where this is your real value, this is your imaginary number, and this is kind of your A plus BI look to it. So either of those should work. All right, and that was simplifying problems with imaginary numbers.